Photoshop now boasts four content-aware tools, two of them which were introduced in CS5 and two of them that are new for CS6. We're going to go through each of them and show you how you can use them to make your images the best they can possibly be. This first one is content-aware scale. And as you can see, we have a beautiful picture of a couple rowing on a lake. And it would be great if the image was wider because this is the specification that our customer gave us. And we really wish the whole thing was a little bit wider, exactly as it was, but just a little bit wider. Well, you can now scale images without ruining the integrity of certain parts of them. To illustrate the dramatic difference between the way it used to be and the way it is now, I'm going to scale a duplicate copy normally as you normally would. So you would just do Command or Control T to transform, and then just stretch it out. Hit Enter to accept, which completely skews the width of the sailboat, or the rowboat rather, and it just looks terrible. Now I'll show you what happens when you do content-aware scale. The first thing you need to do is decide which parts of your image should remain intact, and which parts could actually be stretched. To do that, you'll need to make and save a selection. We'll start with the lasso tool. Of course, you can use any selection tool that you like. And what I really want to do is make sure that the rowboat does not skew. And I might want to even include some of this water here. Certainly the reflections and the oars. And if I uh, need to refine the selection, I could certainly come back in here. Like I might want to add this part here since it's a little bit darker than the rest. And I'd also like to add this little ducky to the selection. So I'm just going to hold down my shift key to add that area. And now we want to save this. You'll save through the select menu, save selection, and give it a name. It can be anything you like. And click OK. Deselect your selection. And through the edit menu, choose content aware scale. And before you do anything, you need to choose your saved selection from the Protect menu at the top of the screen. Since this is the only selection that we'd saved before, it's the only one in the drop-down list. So now that that's selected, we can scale our image. And as you can see, our protected areas remain intact. And everything else was stretched, and it doesn't look too unnatural. So let's take a look at the way it was with regular scaling versus content aware scaling. Now the nice thing about this is maybe our layout we needed to have that space extend to the left but it just wasn't shot that way. We want to add some text or something like that. Now the image fits our layout and we're good to go. So that's content aware scale. The next option that I want to show you is something called content aware fill. You'll start by making a selection. Now for instance I might not want this goal over in the corner so I'm going to select all of that area with my lasso tool. And then I'm going to choose Edit Fill. One of the options in the Use menu for the Fill dropdown, besides foreground and background color, is actually Content Aware. And it will look at surrounding pixels and then fill your selection in with that information. So just click OK, deselect when you're done. You would almost not even know that a change had been made, although there is a slight seam here which you could easily clean up with any of the healing tools. If you really wanted to make this more dramatic, you could go and grab all of this grassy area here and do the same thing. So edit, fill, content aware, okay. Let Photoshop do its magic. And deselect when you're done. Now there is a little bit more of a blurred edge going on here, but again, you could easily use your clone stamp tool or any of the other healing tools to refine your selection. Another thing that you can do is work with the Spot Healing Brush, which allows you to click and drag and paint away anything that you don't want to be there. So if I didn't want this little piece of grass there, I should be able to just click and paint it away, or that little piece there. It's looking at surrounding pixels and then painting with those surrounding pixels. So I would just want to remove anything that might be slightly distracting for the eye. And if you can't get it to work with this tool, then you could certainly use any of the other healing brushes or even the clone stamp tool. Now another thing you can do with Content Aware Fill is to work with panoramic images. 
And we haven't talked about panoramas before, but I want to show you what a panorama looks like, and then I can show you how to create one. So here is a series of images that have been shot with a regular digital camera. Now, if you don't own a fancy panoramic camera, and they do make those, you can easily fake a panorama by shooting a series of images with your film or your digital camera. For best results, you'll want to try to overlap each shot by about 40%, and then you'll bring all of your images into Photoshop, and there's a cool tool, which I'll show you in just a second, that will merge all of these images together. To merge all of the images, you'll open up your File menu, choose Automate, Photo Merge. When the Photo Merge dialog box opens, you just need to make a few simple selections. I usually leave it set to Auto for my photo panoramas, but there are other different layouts like Perspective, Spherical, and Reposition. The next thing that you'll do is select your source files. You could even select an entire folder and just browse. You could also have several files open on your desktop and then pull those into this dialog box. All of the images have been pulled in and are sorted in numerical order, which is the order that I shot them. At the bottom of the panel is an option to blend images together, which is exactly what we want. You could also select Vignette Removal, although because we're trying to seam all of these images together, I would not turn that on. Same with Geometric Distortion Correction. Depending on the type of lens that you use, you would either turn that on or off. When you're ready, click OK. Let Photoshop work its magic, and it might take a minute or two for Photoshop to grab each image, look for edge detection, and see where the images might overlap. And what you'll end up at the end with which is what I had just showed you a moment ago, is a series of layers that each have masks applied to them so that you're only seeing certain parts of each of the original images. If you were to hide and show each of these layers, you'll see where the images have been overlapping. Now, it's not entirely foolproof. Like you can see, this little edge right here is slightly off, but that's something that you could easily correct either by adjusting the rotation of that one piece or by clone stamping or using some of the other healing tools afterwards. Now to use the Content Aware Fill to fill in the transparent areas around the edges, we'll need to merge these layers into a single layer. With all of your layers selected, click and hold down the Options button and choose Merge Layers. Then using any selection tool that you like, I prefer grabbing the magic wand because it really goes all the way around and grabs everything that's touching. All you have to do is edit fill, make sure it's set to content aware, click OK, let Photoshop work its magic, and voila. Now another way to do this, and I'm just going to undo real quick, is to delete the selected areas, but this only works if you're on a locked background layer. You could convert your regular layer into a background layer by choosing layer, new, background from layer. Oops, and it made my background purple, so I'm going to switch that over and do it again. Layer, new, background from layer. Now those white areas are still selected, and if I hit my delete key, it will ask me if I want to fill with content aware. Click OK. Again, give it a second to work its magic, and you're left with the finished results. The results, depending on your image, could be really wonderful and perfect, or you might have to go back in and do a little bit of cleanup after the fact, but it's so much better than having to do all of the work yourself. Look, it seamlessly blended my clouds, my waterline, the landscape off to the side, fixed the pier and the sky, like everything is great. Next, we'll move over and talk about Content Aware Patch. This is one of the new tools in CS6. With Content Aware Patch, you'll be using the new patch tool to make a selection around the area that you want to clean up. So the Content Aware patch is here under the Healing Brush, and you'll just select the area, and then move that shape and release. Deselect to deselect your selection, and you're on to the next piece. So if I wanted to move this little piece of cookie dough here, just draw carefully around, including the shadow, drag that off here, and release. Now it's not completely perfect, but it gives you much better than probably what you could do on your own. And then you could certainly go back in 
and refine with any of the healing tools. Let's do this and this like so. I have another example to show you. So here's a table scene. There's some kind of playing card and some reflections of someone's hand. And here's what it would look like after you remove them. As I said, it's not entirely perfect, but depending on how you move the patch tool once you've sampled the area, when you source it onto the next place, you could usually do some alignment. But anyway, there's before and after. The last thing I wanted to show you is the new tool called Content Aware Move. And this allows you to reposition an object in a scene to a brand new location. It's pretty magical. That tool is also located under the healing brush, Content Aware Move. And like the patch, you'll make a selection and try to get as close to your object as you can. Now, in this case, the dog has a little bit of a shadow underneath it. So I'm going to grab the shadow as well, but try not to get any unnecessary bits of grass. And this is all freehand. If you had a tablet with a stylus, you could probably do a better job of tracing around. Then simply put your cursor on the layer that you have selected. Click and drag and release. Photoshop works its magic. Et voila, you've just moved the dog. I have another example to show you. This would be like a little bit more complex where we'll move this twig. We could move this up here if we wanted to. Or for that matter, we could just remove it completely. So if we wanted to delete it, oops, rather fill it, we could do content aware fill like so. And then for the move, we could move this whole figure and let's even get that little shovel. We'll get the bucket and some of the other stuff like so. You know, maybe you have some kind of layout for vacationing and you want to just move this over so you have room for your copy. Just get into position, move it, release it, let Photoshop do its magic thing, and deselect when you're finished. Now, of course, you can go back in and make some modifications. You know, if we were going to put some type over this area, we might want to go back in with the patch or content aware fill or some of the other tools. And maybe we want to move that here, clean that up, and just remove some of the pieces that are distracting like so. But the way it was before and the way it is after dramatically different. So if you ever find a photograph that's almost but not quite right for your layout, have no fear. All of these content aware tools are here to assist you in making the most of your photographic projects.